Good morning. We're heading offshore today on the 28 Freeman. But first things first, we're gonna fill up the water bottles. This is a spot zero machine. You know, we use that to wash the boat a lot. But you can also drink the water. It's a purifier, it's a reverse osmosis system. And uh, they say it's safe to drink, so we're filling her up here. And if y'all wanna get a spot zero water machine, one of the mobile units, you can either get the mini or the original one. They're great to wash the boat, you don't have to sham me. You can even drink the water. Type in code STANSTEM on the website, spotzerowater.com, and you'll get a special offer. Let's go fishing. Welcome offshore. We just ran over an hour. We thought it was gonna be slick calm. It's two or three footers. Kinda had to run into this little bouncy, a little bit of current there. You can see a current edge back there a few miles, but we're going after the elusive golden tile fish. You can also catch black belly roach fish. You can get a barrel fish. And sometimes you get little sharks, dogfish, stuff like that. But we're gonna get rigged up here. I'm gonna try a jig on one rod, a big uh, slow pitch jig. Then we're gonna have some squid and some cut bait on the other rods and with a little bit of luck, catch some fish for dinner. Charlie's here, Angelina's here, Madison's here, Sarah's here, and Landon's behind the camera. Did you say? No, Madison! Madison is sick? Look at your hair. <laughs> that's, that's, that's friendship. No. Oh no. We have one person seasick already. A little, little rolly. A little mixed up to see, but we got the hooker electric up here. It's a pen 50 and we got 65 pound braid on it. One of our 50 pound deep drop rods. Some cut bait on here, some squid. And remember, everything eats squid in the ocean pretty much. Charlie's got the hand crank rod. I'm gonna do the jig, the artificial back there on the little mix stick. But we're gonna have three rods, hopefully not tangle them, and we're going down. And these golden tiles, they can be anywhere from 600 feet to 1,000 feet of water. We're just gonna hit different depths and just cover different ground. Fingers crossed, get them. We used to get some really nice ones up here. It's been a while since I caught a big one, but uh, let's see what happens. Right on. The multiple hook rig going in there. We call it a chicken rig. I think that everything you catch on it tastes like chicken. Sarah's gonna be on the electric, and we're doing the hand crank ride. All good? Mm -hmm. There we go. The long way down. Oh. I'm going to try the jig. It's a big slow pitch jig there from Jig G Y J Y G. Big old jig on the next stick, light braid, pen torque. Let's see what happens. It's not gonna be fun cranking it up, but 758 feet of water. Down we go, 15 pound braid. Now most people would use electric grills for this, and you know, this is gross. Oh, I'm on the bottom too, I just hit. I'm on the bottom. Everybody's on the bottom. Let's see if anybody gets a bite today. The electrics, you know, when you're out here in deep water grocery shopping, it's kind of what you want a lot of times. This, I'm just hitting bottom, jigging up about 20 feet, and it's going back down. I've never caught one on a uh, golden tile on a jig or any tiles or deep water groupers, to be honest with you, but caught a few queen snappers on a couple queens, but. I wish too. So I'm jigging still. Sarah's got her bait down, Charlie's got his bait down. And Sarah just mentioned years ago, about 10 years ago, we first started coming up here, this area, and catching some of these big goldens. We caught some really nice ones and just, you know, found spots, the bottom machines started drifting and drying them. We put down the camera on the Hooker Electric Housing on GoPro. We got some really cool underwater footage of a 37 pound golden tile fish. And everyone said that the tile fish like lived in mud and burrows. And this fish followed that bait for like 20 minutes before he finally ate it. And, you know, we drifted like a mile in that 20 minute period. So, or close to it anyhow. So that fish was not just sticking in the barrel waiting for the thing to go by. He was chasing that bait, you know, falling and smart and eventually ate it, but you can see two golden tile fish in that video, one smaller one that kind of grabbed the bait and blew it out, and then a big one came in and ate it. And Sarah got him, it was a 37-pounder. That was probably nine or 10 years ago. So a while ago, but it was uh, pretty cool when it happened. No bites. I brought the jig up first and beat him up here. But no bites that drift. We're gonna move spots now, go try a little bit deeper, and Keep running around, hoping to find one of these bad boys. We move spots, gonna try a little bit deeper and see what happens. Sarah's gonna fish the electric. She's putting the trolling motor in now, the road in. And uh, the current's pretty minimal. It's like two miles an hour today, it's about a nine and three quarters. So we'll cut down the hours in the Yamahas by using the trolling motor. I'm sending the jig again. We got that one there. The only bad thing was winding this up last time because you know, there's over 800 feet of line out. But if we get one on it, it'll be really cool. Sarah just hit bottom and she got a bite right away. 
think it might be a rose fish, like a black belly rose fish. You can see it on there thumping and tapping, but not what we're after. We're after a big golden tile. But they are good eating, so if we catch a few of those, we'll definitely eat them. Just a slow speed forward. We're not spot locking, we're drifting and we want to cover ground. So just got the Yamas up now. That road is just going really slow, about maybe half a mile an hour. And uh, just drifting out here, drifting and dreaming now. I've got a fish on, on the jig. I think it's a rosy, he's not pulling much, but this going be a lot of line to crank. 800 feet line to crank, catch a rosy, it's gonna be brutal. I kinda wanna go back down and try to double up. We're right on the numbers now for the old spot, the old honey hole right here. I really don't wanna catch a rosy that bad on here, so I'm letting him back down if I go. He's on there, he just ain't very big. Well, and instead I'm cheating because I put it in the rod holder. I don't mind catching a 20 pound golden tile while I'm standing up, but if I'm gonna catch a one or two pound rosy, I put it in the holder. Well, this is our, another sample here. We're still working on the Nick sticks. Hopefully, I got some coming in soon, but we'll wait y'all longer. But that way, it fits the rod holder better. And when you put it in your hip, oh, Sarah's getting a bite, right? Now, you could get all tangled up having three rods down there, so. The moment of truth a black belly rose fish. All that way down there for that fish. <laughs> This is what it's come to, it's 2024, and we are catching rosies on slow pitch jigs as big as they are, so. <laughs> Welcome to the new age. So they call them black belly rose fish. If you look in their throat, you'll see it's all black, and the inside of their stomach, the lining is all black. But they got little spikes all over them on their head there. And you gotta be careful grabbing them because there's spikes in their cheeks there. Lay you open. It looks like Sarah's got a couple of rosies on. A tile fish, they pull out harder. The goldens, they'll really kick and thump, but I don't think Charlie, you never had a bite, right? Not so much as a nibble. We got the trolling motor on there, the Rodan, just on manual, and just slow speed, picking the heading we want to go on. Gonna drive, we're gonna redrift it. Hopefully, I don't get another rose fish on there. I want a tile fish, but we'll take them. They're still good eating. No, no, no. 60 revolutions to go. And it's a spool revolution, it's not a foot, but that's how many turns in the reel. Here we go, we got color. What do we got? We got rosies or we got a dogfish? Could be a dogfish, looks like a little shark. Yep, we got two roses and a dogfish. A triple header! Look at that little booger there. So that's like a dogfish, which they have spikes on their back there. You see that spiny dogfish there? They can really spike there, but those rosies are actually really good eating, so. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And they only get about three or four pounds, about four pounds of eggs ever come. Bye bye, dogfish. He's gone. A lot of times when you're on a char, you don't catch much. You can go, these things will be anywhere from 700 to 1200 feet of water. A lot of times you can stop on the way home if you're on a char, you haven't caught much and they're really good eating. Some people do target them too, which we don't eat them. I'm happy to catch them to eat them, but we really want like a golden tile fish because that is the trophy for the day if we can get one. You can see their black belly rose fish, their throat's black. When we go to clean them, the inside of their stomach lining is black. And what they think, you know, that's evolution. A lot of these fish eat deep water critters that are bioluminescent, you know? And if they eat it and you could see through their stomach, other predatory fish could eat these bigger fish. So with that being black lining, it doesn't show that, sh uh, you know, light from a bioluminescent fish, you know, and little critters they eat, whatever, you know, plankton or whatnot. So they think that's what that's from. So some of these deep water fish have a black belly lining, but black belly rose fish, very good eating, just small, but we will eat them, no doubt. I'm going back for more punishment. 540 grams, which I'm not good with my grams to ask, cause but it's gotta be around 12 ounces though, it's bigger. It's going back down. It's like we're out here drifting, we're starting about 800, coming up this little ledge here, but you can see all that bait there. And, you know, within 50 feet of the bottom, from 750 right down to 800. Nice little ledge here, but this boat has the 1KW Aramar transducer and uh, the Garmin screens there. So we're coming up the ledge. We are in the zone. Hopefully Sarah hits bottom soon. I think Angelina and Angie's gonna Go on the electric reel this time, and me and Charlie are still doing the hand cranks. I hooked up another rosy. You can just tell I just thumped a little bit and there's a little bit of weight on there. We have not got the big gold tile bite yet. That one had bites right when we hit bottom there, but they just seem like rosies. But I hope we get one. That's the bottom, dude. Oh, bottom. Uh, I got it. We got color. I had it in the rod holder, still up the last 100 feet. Whew. That is a lot of work for a black belly rose fish. But they do eat the jig on the next stick. It's not what we're looking for out here today. 
There's a little extra weight on there. It might be one of those rosefish. Perfect for a beautiful rosefish beer blanc, which we may get into later if we survive this perilous day at sea. The good thing about the 23 minutes, there's bow seating up here. I never thought I'd sit in it. But with the trolling motor going, the direction and heading, Who and electric back here. Sarah's got the controller. Andrew's on the hooker electric there. We've got dinner coming up. I think more rosies, but we'll take a handful of them and we'll have a good feast no matter what. And hopefully by the end of the day, we got us ourselves a golden tile. That is the goal. Charlie caught himself a fish, but they got tangled up here. We don't want to break the braid, so. There we go. So he's just gonna go around with a rod. Charlie got himself dinner. Oh my God. Tell him how brutal it is cranking up 800 feet of water with a two pound sinker. Let me tell you. It's no joke. This is no joke like Nicholas. <laughs> uh, the elusive black belly rose fish. A long way to go to hand crank. You better hope those ones hit the electric. It's a triple. Oh no, one just fell off. <laughs> no, two fell off. No. Two of them came off right there. Oh no, two of them came off. No, they rosies go back down. All right, there was three, we're down to one. Rosies are notorious for spinning up your rig as you can see they're all twisted. And they came off right there. They're going back down, but another one for the frying pan. Try number four. Oops. We just put out the rod again. Two more rosies, one small one. This is like a nice average size. They're about four pounds big I've ever caught. So that's a two pounder or so right here. The other one's a little bit a pound, but very good meat on them. Kind of like a deep water hogfish. So we're gonna bring up the road in. We're gonna go reset and just keep drifting. Just keep hitting these ledges out here and hopefully find some, uh, find the right one, find that golden towel. If not, we got dinner covered though. Six and a half hours later. We have switched positions. We got two rosies last drop. I move up to the bow with a jig. Sarah and Ange have got the electric going down in the middle of the boat. Charlie moved to the back. They got bait on theirs, I got artificial. Keeping our fingers crossed we find that big tile today. No golden tile fish yet. Some rosies, a couple more rosies last trip. No more bites the last hour. The jigging is getting harder. And we're not getting bites from bait either. We got time to hit a couple more spots but we gotta go back in. It's not been a great day so far. We got dinner covered. Sarah's telling some funny stories, but besides that, we're working hard for dinner. We're going to that fourth spot. The last couple have been dead, no fish. We're gonna move up shallow though, drop in another 100 feet, and see if we can find them. You know, they're not deep, maybe they're shallow, but definitely not as easy to catch as they were eight or 10 years ago. But we're not giving up yet. We got dinner covered, but we're looking for that movie star. We're gonna run up here and see what happens. That's him, we just moved spots. I got something on, it's bigger than a rosy, I think. Can't really pull him too much, but. A golden tile, please. Hopefully. Oh, that's a good bite. That's a good bite there. The key is not to fall in off the bow up here. We just had another bite on the electric there. It came off, but it was a decent bite. It was not a rosy. There he is. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know what this is. I mean, I hope it's a tile. It didn't pull that hard, but it just is pulling harder than a rosy. So maybe it's two rosies. I mean, I know a tile probably pull harder than it, but hopefully it stays on there. So hard to tell. We're 700 feet of water. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! God. It's, an orcfish. It's, an orcfish. Oh, wow. it's a scabbard fish. That's a fish of a lifetime. They catch them in Mexico. We just caught one. That is a fish of a lifetime. Oh my God, that is awesome. They've been catching these in Mexico, off Cancun, Robert down there. We just caught one. On a jig, on a vertical jig there in 700 feet of water. Holy moly there. You don't see that every day there, you guys. That just made the whole trip worth it. That is better than a golden tile fish. I don't know if we can eat it or not, but I believe that's a, a scabbard fish, what they call them, but that is awesome. Unbelievable, never thought we'd catch anything like that here. That just, you just never know, and on the jig, so. Whoa. Awesome, I believe it's a scabbard fish. Similar looking at an oarfish, but I believe it's a channel scabbard fish, what they call them, but. Look at this. That is cool. Look at his little tail there, little fin there in the tail. Oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> we got him, Charlie. Nice. I hope it's good eating. That is the, wi oh, it's wiggling too. That's <laughs> pinching us. Whoa. We got him on a jig here, and 
The bottom hook's got him kind of in the stomach there. And I believe this is probably what I've seen in some swordfish here. And I always thought they were oarfish, but they're probably just these. And I'm 99% sure this is called a scabbard fish. If you guys know, let me know for sure. But I mean, I've fished here my entire life. I've never seen one of these caught here. And Sarah had a couple bites. I wonder if that's what was biting hers or not. But what a cool fish. And I, I believe this is probably what I've seen in swordfish sometimes. I thought they were other types of fish, I'm guessing. How do you eat that? I don't know, but got him on the Jig Pro jig there. And uh, that was pretty cool there. Fish of a lifetime, no doubt. We're gonna reset. Sarah did have two decent bites on the electric that time, but uh, Charlie's cranking up the hand crank. She's got the electric coming up, and we're gonna reset and see what happens. We had another hour to fish, so hopefully we get one more cool fish. Just had a bite on the electric on the chicken rig with the bait. No bites on the jig yet, though, this drift. No bites for Charlie. No bites for me, no. but Sassy Sarah just got a trophy size Rosie, probably a three and a half pounder. These are the Mustad circle hooks. And remember, if you go to the Mustad website and you type in Stands 20, you can save 20% on any Mustad product on their website. So deep dropping today with them, 80 circle hook and uh, black belly rose fish for dinner. This is the final retrieve of the day. And I'm getting hungry and all we have is veg vegetable chips. When you're down to vegetable chips, it's time to go home. I ate the turkey bacon sub. There may be a rose down here. Could be a starfish for all I know, but we got a long way to run home. We did get the scabbard fish, but I believe it's a channel scabbard fish, not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. Fish of a lifetime, no doubt. Plenty of rosies. Probably got a dozen roses in there, so. Here she comes. Let's see what we got here. Completely empty. No fish. It's definitely time to go home. We'll see you back at Bud and Mary. When we hit the channel, we like to open up the boat there. We got to 62.9 miles an hour and I ran out of real estate, so probably would hit 64, 65. But I believe channel scabbard fish is what it sounds like from looking on the phone. Fish of a lifetime, no doubt. I called up Great Tax Room to see if they wanted to make a mold out of it, because sometimes if they catch like an exotic fish and they don't have a mold of it, a replica, they'll make a mold so that way they can make fish masks for people in the future. But he said the fish is so rare here that they don't get enough orders, so it's probably not worth them doing so. We're probably gonna pass in the mold of it, but we may eat it ourselves. Um, we're gonna clean up some rosies too, though. Hope you enjoyed that video so far. We're gonna pull in here, start washing the boat, clean up the fish, and we'll see you back at home in a little while after we clean up the fish. So we just got in. I'm gonna clean some fish. I'm waiting to hear back from the guy in Mexico that I know catches those fish, you know, those channel scabbard fish, to see what we should do if we're gonna eat it, you know? So we'll see. And a lot of those fish, you catch them that deep, a couple hooks in them on the jigs that obviously don't survive. So we're gonna get a couple of these roses out of here. Black belly rose fish. And uh, they'll be very good to eat. We've cooked them before, but not in a while. And these, you know, half of those are pretty good size. Probably two and a half to three pounds. And you know, a few of them are just a pound or two. But they have a big head on them. They're very good to eat. We've cooked them whole before. Actually, we're really good haul. Get a little more meat that way. But we are gonna fillet them because we want fillets. We're gonna go right behind the head like usual. But very white meat. Very good to eat. They're very spiny, so you wanna be careful when you're cleaning them. We'll save these uh, for crab traps, because I got that center bone like that. Let me just knock up this other side really quick, and then I'll show you the belly lining. Why they call them black belly rose fish. Split, I'll just cut, uh, I'll kind of cut this and just fold it open so you guys can see it. Well, that's his belly, I mean, look how black that is there, so. And I believe that's what I heard, you know, that people believe from these deep water fish eating those bioluminescent fish, you know, or whatever they eat down there that kind of glows and if fish can see that in their stomach, they can eat these other fish, the predators, so hence the dark lining of it is what they tell me. Anyhow, we're gonna find out about that scabbard fish if he's safe to eat, hopefully, and then uh, we'll see you back at home, either with Rosie and scabbard or with just Rosie's, and if we don't eat them, we'll use them for swordfish bait, because I think it'll be a great bait. So we're back at the cleaning table. We have got the channel scabbard fish. We got confirmation that's what it was. And I knew that Roberto Navarro had been catching them down in Mexico. And that is my source of information there. And I asked him, I said, can you eat these? And he said, yes, you can eat them. They make great tacos. And you know they make good tacos south of the border. So we're gonna fillet it, but he said leave the skin on it because the skin is so thin. So we're gonna fillet them up. I don't know if we're gonna make tacos with it, but the more research we do, there's different types of scabbard fish. I think a black scabbard fish was caught in the Mediterranean a lot, like off Spain. And supposedly what we read on the internet, if you eat the liver, you can get sick and it could kill you. So we don't wanna eat the liver, so we're gonna try to avoid the stomach cavity there. And this is a channel scabbard, so it's a little different, but we're gonna leave the skin on it. It's super thin. I mean, look how thin this fish is. So it's gonna be really thin there. But like I said, when we caught this fish, 
probably wasn't going to survive with a double hook um, slow pitch jig, you know, two hooks in his face, two hooks in his belly. So we're doing that. And behind us tonight, you can see this, there's a fundraiser going on for one of the local schools here. And they've got a bunch of tables set up. It's going to be a really nice event and function. And just remember, if you're ever doing a wedding or private party and you want to do something in the Keys, like unique, here at Bud Murray's, we've got the whole barn space here that you can do anything like that. So we'll show you a couple pictures and videos of that, you know, um, from later on. I'm going to splice that in here and keep it in mind. So there'll be cherry there and the whole barn's covered in case it rains, if it's windy. But let's get back to flaying this fish now and let's see how it goes. This thing, I mean, I never thought I'd be flaying anything like this. So I thought about staking it, but we're going to try to avoid his stomach. So we'll go back here by his vent because, you know, all the way there by his anal vent. And We'll try to avoid that. So I can feel it here. So I'm just trying to stay just above it because what we read on those black scabbard fish there, it sounded a little dangerous. So I'm excited to try it, you know, just to try a new species of fish. And it was really cool catching it. And you know, I wanted a golden tile and we didn't get them, but we got something even cooler. And that's, this is a fish of a lifetime, no doubt. Maybe, I mean, this, this could be a delicacy. You know, there's no talent. And you know, I don't know, they're obviously not common, but maybe just because they don't like eat the normal bait that we use and chicken rigs that we use using that depth you know but if we start using these slow pitch jigs now a little more often nor even a vertical jig or whatever we might start catching a few of these so it'll be in interesting to see if i ever catch another one i don't know if i will or not but this actually worked out on that so we missed a little bit of meat back here in the bottom section but there it is so you can see it right there it is pretty white this is like the rib cage area for the stomach cavity so we're just going to cut that out and we're going to leave the skin on there and when we cook it, it should peel right off the skin, but that is a scabbard fish fillet. Very unusual there. And <laughs> first time I've ever seen one caught here. We're gonna play this other side next and uh, save the carcass for the stone crabs. But you saw the one half there. We'll see you back in the kitchen at home. Am I in focus? Yep. I look better from this angle. From this angle. It's definitely the other one. Yeah, that one. Oh yeah. We're good. We're ready. We're in? Yep. Go. Welcome back to the kitchen. We're here with Chef Charlie. Always a pleasure. He might not have caught the scabbard fish, but he's gonna cook it. We're also gonna do some rosy just in case. How are we doing the fish? Well, since we're potentially the first people in the Florida Keys to catch and cook a scabbard fish, let alone a silver scabbard fish, I haven't seen one before and I've been fishing my whole life. That's your first one, right? First one I've ever seen. And uh, I don't even know if there's any videos out there. I didn't look on YouTube, but I know I'm next to their catching, but I've never seen one caught here. All right, so how are we doing this fish? We got some uh, plant-based butter over there, right? So it's not gonna work. It's missing a critical piece of equipment. She broke it. This is from Beth, thank you here. So what we're going to do with this silver scabbard fish is actually pretty straightforward. Um, we've got a seafood beer block sauce here, which is white wine, a little bit of butter, a little bit of cream. It's actually a plant-based uh, substitute, if you will, for butter and cream. So we won't have to worry about those troubles and stomach aches. We're actually going to have this seafood stuffing that we've got going over here, and we're going to broil the scabbard fish with the seafood stuffing, which is delicious. It's got some shrimp, it's got some crab, it's got a little bit of crab and mushroom. Everything you need, nothing you don't. And we're gonna broil that scabbard fish in order to make sure that it has that magnificent flavor that everybody loves. We're also gonna pan fry this rosy because it's delicious and we're all sketched out by the scabbard fish to be quite honest. Definitely. Are you gonna eat the scabbard fish? I will try a bite to see what it tastes like. Roberto said it was good. But uh, he, make said, tacos he with said fish tacos though. Which you I can think, make fish tacos out of anything. Which we know that, but uh, we're gonna put this to the test here. We'll see how it goes. Worst case, we got lots of roses to eat, but best case, it might be a new delicacy. It could be. We might be onto something here. It's a delicacy in Spain. So, any Stan fans out there in Spain and you've had scabbard fish, please comment below. Let us know how it is because we're about to find out. Well, if you're a comment, they probably survived, so at least we know how to eat and live. In theory. So, in theory. Either way, we're going to get into this, so stay tuned. So this is silver scabbard fish. Nicholas did a great job filleting it, and I don't, that's a, you weren't, you weren't kidding. <laughs> you know, I thought you were going to do this in a nice piece. We're going to have to, we're going to have to modify this a little Too bit. Long? Look at that skin there. That's crazy silver. You know, it's a very white, delicate meat. It looks beautiful, actually. You know, it's very thin, so it's going to cook very fast, which is why we're going to broil it up. But I mean, that's just a crazy looking, Filet compared to all of these rose fish. I thought you were gonna cut this in little chunks. Oh, yeah. Play with it. You did a good job though. I mean, this is I, this takes a surgeon's hand. I got both. Look at this of thing. It's like a snake. This is crazy looking. Now we, we could use that for swordfish bait too. I'm sure it'd be good, but we're gonna eat it. Well, because yeah. we know that they commercial fish them in Spain, the black scabbard fish, and this is a channel scabbard or silver scabbard fish, I believe. And uh, 
We're gonna see how it turns out here. We're gonna create a couple little sections of this and we're actually gonna broil it like this. It's very thin, you know, when you do stuffed fish, you can do that with flounder, you can do that with all kinds of flat fish. Some people do it with mahi-mahi. But we're gonna figure this out here. I'm first time cooking scabbard fish. I guess it's everyone's first time trying this as well, so I'm, I'm, very, intri I'm very intrigued here. Just a little egg wash, a little panko here to crisp it up. Rose fish has such good flavor, you don't really want to do too much to it. This is our seafood stuffing. I'm gonna form that into these little pieces here. This is a pretty standard buttered tray. A nice little ball like that. The stuffing's already cooked, it's just gonna let the cooked fish on top of it. And make sure to check out Charlie's channel, Bonafide World Guide. So generous. He has you. got his traveling antics around the world on there, and he had a video go. Pretty so, viral. I think so. 700,000 views. 700,000 views on a video he went in Belize, correct? That's correct. And he's got diving and traveling, eating, and all that good stuff. All a bunch of stuff, all different places. So go check it out, Bonafide World Guide. We'd love to have you over there to see all of our culinary events and traveling antics. He can cook, I promise you. And he has a good time. <laughs> Scabbard fish. Stuffed with seafood stuffing. You can do this with flounder, you can do this with mahi mahi, you can do this with all kinds of fish. This is outside my usual realm. I'm about this usual fried fish right there. It's a panko, but I will try this. It's a little bit of Everglades seasoning. It's one of my all time favorites. Really, really nice flavor. Scoured fish has a bunch of oil in it, so it should just help the coat and cook at this point. We don't need to go too crazy. We're going to finish it with some lemon once we've baked it in the oven for a while. 400 degrees. What? Why have we never seen this before? Yeah. Cool. This is the rose fish. We've already ate over half of it. It's delicious, panko. Very good, like Charlie said. Very good fish, so I don't do too much to it. It's really good. But the scabbard fish is in the pan, and a little bit of panko. And the main dish, the stuffed fish, I guess stuffed fish, is that what you'd call it? Stuffed silver scabbard. The stuffed scabbard. With a seafood beurre blanc. Is in the oven right now. It's almost done. We're two minutes away. What do you call it? A beurre blanc? It's a beurre blanc. A little bit of white wine, a little bit of butter, a little bit of cream, some seafood, and a couple other little savory things in there just to make it extra nice. Yeah. That is stuffed silver scabbard fish. We're going to top that with a sauce here. Oh, it's real nice. Broker. <laughs> here we go. That looks real nice. It's all about finishing with a little bit of that special dill right there. Or is that beautiful? Nice. I believe we are the first to try pan seared silver scabbard in the state of Florida. That could be true. Here we go. Cheers. Are you eating the skin? Yeah, I'm eating the skin. Okay, Charlie's eating the skin. I want to peel mine off the skin. That is pretty phenomenal. It's good? I'm not kidding, it's really good. You can see the steam coming up, it's still, it's still hot. I, I pull it off the skin. No, it's like very delicate, it's white, it's delicious, it's savory, it's got like a butter flavor to it. Really good. I think it's great. It's actually surprisingly good. Mm. It's still soft. moist, yeah, it's moist too, very soft, but very moist actually. It almost tastes like a freshwater fish, kind of like a like a trout, but better. So it's gonna be like a flounder. Skin peels mm. right off there. It's great, whatever it is, it's fantastic. It's like very light, very delicate. It's like a really fancy white meat. Truly spectacular. I'm so impressed. What do you think? Good job. It could be anything. anything. Triple tail. All right, well, we're still alive, so that's good. But we have to try the stuffed fish because that's the real test. Because right, fried, you know, everything, you can fry everything. But that's true. actually surprised that it does taste that good. You can just see the meat peeling right off the skin there. So you ate the skin though, didn't you? I ate the whole thing. I think it tastes, I think that might be the best part, actually. Crispy fish skin, you know, with snappers and things. That tastes pretty good, but this is, uh, it's true. It's really nice. I understand why it's a delicacy in Spain. I, can, I get it now. I will leave the skin there for you, but let's go try the main mm, course. Look at that beautiful thing. Silver scabbard fish stuffed with a seafood stuffing. Please enjoy, everybody. Here we go. This is Angelina. She's been helping the kids lately. She was on the boat the other day, got a couple of rosies. We didn't find the big golden tile, but we got the scabbard fish instead. This is not, This is something I would never eat, but I'm going to try it. Like, I don't eat stuffed good. stuff. Do you approve of it? So good. Uh, it's good? You the skin with it? Mm -hmm. Just eat the whole thing? You ate Go the skin. It. Go for it. 
I'm going to eat some of the skin. I didn't even really tell the skin on it, honestly, so it's like soft. You so choked buttery. it down so fast, you didn't even try to taste it. It's so buttery. You like it? Mara, what do you think? Did you try it? I think this is probably one of Charlie's best preparations <laughs> to date. This is you really see the good. seafood beer blanc with the, it's the white wine that yeah. sets it off. Really I'm glad good. everybody enjoys it. That's a, it's a real treat, particularly when you can enjoy it with the Stan Spam. Awesome. Thanks for having us over for dinner, Nick. Well, thanks for coming and cooking. The jig down 700 feet of water, 700 feet of water and got him. And it's a lot of work jigging out deep. It is a workout. He was Hank Greg for the Robin Bait. And I think you only got one Rosie all day, but we got a bunch of the electrics and uh, that was a fish of a lifetime, no doubt. Now it tastes like a fish of a lifetime. Great I actually success. liked the sauce better than I thought I would too, so. I think we did it. We did it. That was a good time. Thanks for joining us, everybody. It was awesome. Nicholas, send us off with style. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit that like button, make sure to subscribe. If you want any merch or any fishing tackle, as always, head to the website stansfishing.com. And uh, hopefully we'll see you down here next week. So we got some more videos coming up and enjoy.